What's up, guys? Welcome back. I am joined today once again by Ashley Rogers. Ashley, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you, John? I'm good. I'm uh, I'm getting over the holiday hangover, getting back into the swing of things. But uh, I'm excited. It's uh, it's 2020. It's a new year, and it's going to be a great one. I have a good feeling about it. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, so Ashley recently joined us to help show us child and parent flows. And uh, after that video, the, she did such a great job. I was like, we got we to gotta do some more stuff together. And so sh I asked her if we could do something, since her wheelhouse is SharePoint, if we could do something on the SharePoint HTTP connector, to which she obliged. And so that's what we're here to do today. And so I'm going to let Ashley introduce herself for those of you that might not know her. And then Ashley, after that, the floor is yours. Okay, guys. So like John said, we're going to talk about uh, the SharePoint HTTP connector in Power Automate today. Um, so really a great way to sort of power up your flows, do some interesting, cool things, maybe that you can't do out of the box. Um, and also doing some things that aren't, it's not premium. That's the really great thing here. This is not premium like the other HTTP connectors that you might be familiar with. Yep. Um, so um, again, I'm Ashley Rogers. I am a senior SharePoint consultant with Peak Group. I also do a lot of speaking, and my focus, you know, lately has been Power Automate, but really I've got a, a deep background in SharePoint, so I love sharing that with you guys uh, and seeing what we can do. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, that's my handle there at Ashley K. Hillier. And if you want to check out my uh, blog, it's spinbetween.blogspot.com. I'm actually working on a series right now where uh, it's for SharePoint newbies. So this is perfect. Power Automate is going to be featured in there soon. So check it out. Cool. And I'll have her links down in the description for easy clicking. Awesome. All right. So let's talk a little bit about SharePoint. So if people aren't familiar with what SharePoint does, it's, it's kind of like a buzzword, right? Everybody's familiar with the word SharePoint, uh, but maybe you're not using it every day or maybe you're using it at work and it's sort of boring and you're not really sure what you can do with it. Uh, but SharePoint's actually super, super cool. So really, this is a place for document storage and collaboration. You can work with your office documents inside of SharePoint. Uh, you can store different lists and all the metadata about those things. So if you're if you're used to working maybe with CDS and entities, it's a very similar concept. You know, you can build your lists, you can store data about things and then do some super cool stuff inside Power Automate with SharePoint data. Um, another thing that we work on a lot is the end-to-end -end business processes. So we've got support for requests and approvals. There's a lot of out-of-the-box stuff that works nicely with Power Automate. Uh, you can do some things like portfolio management. Uh, document sets are a specific uh, piece inside of SharePoint that, again, you might, you might be familiar with, but maybe it's not something that you use all the time. Um, and I do a lot of stuff with SharePoint that that I can't even quantify here, right? There's a lot of stuff that that goes on that people request. They want to say, can SharePoint do this? And my answer is, yeah, probably it can. Let's figure it out. Yeah. And so I think uh, a quick way I always like to break these down and relate them for people like document storage. It's like OneDrive or Dropbox. Where can I hold things? List and metadata management. It's like a fancy Excel spreadsheet. It's columns and rows, right? Uh, and then end-to-end -end business processes. Before there were flow approvals and, and approvals in all sorts of other systems, SharePoint actually has a whole built-in system for approvals and requests and, and managing all the, the audit trail of all of that. And so I think those are you know three quick real-world applicable ways that you are already familiar with some of the concepts happening here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. So what we're really talking about today is inside of Power Automate. So the connector, the SharePoint connector, we've got lots of different triggers here. Uh, the most popular ones that I've seen, especially working in the forums and things like that, people want to see things uh, kick off when items are created or maybe when somebody modifies a document, modifies an item. We want to send a notification. We want to do something cool with that um, and, and maybe build into that like a request process or an approval process, things like that. So we've got a lot of great triggers um, and there are over 40 actions in Power Automate for SharePoint. There's some really interesting things in there that maybe if you're not super familiar with SharePoint, uh, might not be applicable to you yet, but if you are a SharePoint person, I definitely uh, definitely 
definitely stress you should go look at the um, documentation, look at what's available to you, and things keep getting added. Stuff that I used to have to do with the HTTP connector and actually using you know, REST calls, they're now making those into actual actions. So we're taking yeah. the low code, no code approach and really pushing that into SharePoint. Definitely, they're, they're constantly trying to update that connector and add new stuff and make it accessible to everybody. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's it's very exciting for me to see. I love that stuff. So, so again, today we're looking at the HTTP to SharePoint connector. Um, as I mentioned before, unlike other HTTP actions, this is not a premium connector. It's actually the only one that's not premium because it's really a part of the Microsoft stack. Yep. You're really staying inside of Office 365. There's no handshake to third parties that you have to do. It uses the connection that you already have inside of Office 365, your license is already there. Um, and it's so this really is a great reason to house your data in SharePoint. You know, if it's something that you can do in SharePoint, try it out. Try this, you know, try it on for size and uh, and really try to dig in to see what you can what you can do with it. Totally. Yeah. So and it's it's also super flexible, right? So if you're if you're used to HTTP, if I say that and that that makes sense to you from a development standpoint, you're going to know that you can actually use things you're familiar with. So rest calls um, and then the HTTP verbs, which we'll go over, you know, get, post, patch, delete. These are words that we've heard before, especially if you've done some of this. Um, and so you really can do a lot of powerful, very cool things with this connector. So. The first thing I want to talk to you guys about is the anatomy of an HTTP request to SharePoint. So if you're not super familiar with what's going on, this is something that we really need to dig into and, and take a peek at. So instead of boring you with the slides, we're going to go straight into a demo. Let's do this. Okay. Okay. So what I've got for you here is a flow that has the get method for the HTTP request to SharePoint. I'm going to break these items down here. I'm going to show you what goes into each box, but first I'm going to bring it over to SharePoint to kind of level set us to get us where we need to be. Okay. So if you watched the other video where we talked about the parent and child flows, you're, this is going to look super familiar to you. Uh, and if, if you didn't, I'll show you what I've done here. I've got a list inside of SharePoint. This is my Northwind Traders site. And I've got in this, this is my flow testing area. This is what I do when I've got something I'm trying to try out. I've got a different type of column that's everything that's available inside of SharePoint so that I can just easily test and easily look things up here. So we're gonna work against this list. I'm gonna bring this back to my colors. So we've got three items, three different colors, and this is what we're gonna be pulling back. So if we take a peek at the URL here, We've got our site name, and then we've got forward slash lists, and then forward slash flow testing. So that makes sense, right? We're inside the Northwind Traders site, where we've got our um, call out to it's a list, and we're gonna say that this is the flow testing list. Mm -hmm. You don't need to think about any of the other stuff here, the colors.aspx and this view ID, that all has to do with what we're looking at. But really what we care about is the URL. So if I go back over here to our flow, we're going to see that all that stuff that is in the URL actually maps into the HTTP request to SharePoint uh, action here. So we've got our site address, and then we've got our method that isn't mentioned in the URL, but certainly we know that we're going to grab some items, so we're going to use get. And then the URI here, it's not tricky. It's really just something that stands for URL. That's when you see URI, you can think URL. Mm -hmm. The only extras here that aren't involved in the other URL is the API, the underscore API forward slash web, and then we see lists. So what we're trying to do here is send a request to SharePoint that says, hey, I'm going to talk to the API, I'm talking to the web, I'm looking at the lists, and then we've got get by title. So we're talking to the lists, we're getting by the title, and the title is flow testing. We just mm -hmm. put that in single quotes. And then to indicate what I'd like to get back, we just do a forward slash items. The question mark is a special piece. Uh, don't worry about that for now, but you just need to know that that's part of the formatting, right? So we've got the, the call out to the endpoint, and we say that we want back the items. If we wanted a particular item, we'd put that inside parentheses and we'd, we'd supply the ID, but we don't need to do that right now. 
Okay. So then in the headers, this is again not super tricky, but if you don't know what's going in here, it can kind of it can kind of be intimidating. All we want to do is say accept and then application forward slash JSON OData equals verbose. So this is going to bring back, this is telling the endpoint that I would like to bring back everything. I want to see everything that's in the flow testing list. I want all the metadata, all the data about the data, and bring back everything so that I can do something cool with it. Now, a side note, because I know my developer friends are going to say something about this. When you're doing this in production, you're going to say O data equals no metadata. That's super important. We don't want to bring back extra data. It's something that uh, we have a couple of blog posts about. Um, I can point you guys towards something um, after the video, but definitely to do your development, you want the O data equals verbose. Okay. So when you do an HTTP request to SharePoint, you're going to get a whole bunch of data back. Now, you might be familiar with the parse JSON action because we've done that before. We've seen that in the last video that I've done. And we're going to need this in order to do something interesting with the data that comes back, right? So let's go ahead and run this flow and see what comes back. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of data. Great success. So ignore the rest of this here. I'm going to demonstrate something to you in just a moment. But what we're going to do is open the action here and then look at the body. And you can see that I've requested all this metadata. And it's got a lot of great stuff in here. It's everything that I had that came back, right? So I can do whatever I want with this data. I can then pass it into the parse JSON action. I can then um, update another list. I can send a notification. This is basically bringing back everything. Now, this might seem a little redundant, right? Because we also have the get items action. And that is something that is out of the box, built in in Power Automate. You don't need any code for that. Mm -hmm. So why do we use the HTTP request instead of just the get items? Well, so the get items also provides support for filters, order buys, top counts, all that good stuff that you could build into your HTTP request here. I could add in filter, anything like that here. But the interesting part comes in when you don't have support inside Power Automate to do a specific thing. So for me, this is all about document sets. I love working with document sets. I've talked about this before. It's something that um, a lot of folks do in order to manage portfolios, legal documents, all that good stuff, different requests. And there's no support for document sets currently inside of Power Automate. You've got to do all of that using the, um, the HTTP connector. So okay. as an example, here I am building this request to send this over to SharePoint and say, hey, I want to get back all the content types, which is going to be my first step in actually doing a document set request. We're not going to cover that here today, but I just want to show you that the power of actually using this against SharePoint to do something really, really cool. Yeah. So I'll go ahead. Yeah, and it's Great. funny, you know, because like you said, there were a lot of times where in the past this connector was needed to do things, right? But as time goes on, like you said, oh, there's this get items now. I don't need to build a a get request from the from the API because I just have a native action in flow. But uh, I think, you know, the big point is when you're doing this, when you're doing some advanced work in SharePoint, there's still a lot that Power Automate's not doing. It supports a lot that the business user needs to do, but from the admin side of things, you know, there's still some gaps. And so uh, I think, you know, that's why this is extra cool. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And it's something that once you once you figure out how to build the small calls and how you how to actually get some items in there, then you can start to build those and say, OK, well, what do I actually need to do? Is this something that that I just can build on top of? So so it really does provide you with a lot of extra support. Now, when you're doing these things, like if you're if you're working with document sets, if you're working with permissions inside of SharePoint and you're you're going to use that HTTP request, there's a lot of documentation out there that's actually not related to Power Automate. So we can provide a couple of links to those things as well and it might feel a little devy but it's pretty easy to get started with cool and the uh so the next time 
that we talk about this. Um, I'm going to show how to do a post, how to do a patch, and how to do a delete. Um, so when you do those things, there's some extra gotchas in there. There's um, some information you've got to put into the body of the request, and we'll go all over all of that in the next video. Awesome. Okay, so part one is here. Part two coming up soon. Ashley, thank you again for coming and joining and uh, giving a nice quick intro to getting started with HTTP here in SharePoint. I actually, I've never touched this myself, uh, so it was my introduction to this connector as well. All right, well, it's my pleasure and I can't wait to, to show you guys the rest of it. Awesome. All right. So guys, be sure to check the links in the description. Uh, there's going to be Ashley's Twitter in there and her blog. We'll have some helpful links, uh, some documentation about the HTTP connector here and some things you need to know to get started. Other than that, you guys know what to do. Click like, click subscribe. Much love from me. See you in the next one. Bye guys.